we're going to talk about a couple of artists whose work is maybe not as well known as David's or Fragonard's, but I think is still very important. Jean-Baptiste Greuze painted The Village Bride, and this is a calmer interior scene of more humble origins. But let's first begin so that we can kind of wrap our minds around how we get to Rococo and neoclassicism. This is the Sun King, Louis XIV, in all his pomp and glory. Louis XIV is a big patron of the arts. And during this time, there is a classicism and a grand manner. Um, he builds Versailles, which is a whole city in and of itself. He is a major art patron, and he maintains a workshop for artists specializing in all kinds of different areas of art. He expands his power and uses it as propaganda. So he builds the Versailles Palace, um, 1669, the gardens. He expands the Louvre and actually hires uh, the father of one of our women artists, Charles Lebrun, and Mansart um, to combine styles for the Louvre, the Italian Baroque and French classical styles. This is a time when the Royal Academy is funded in France in 1648 first, and then in England in 1768. So these are all great contributions for artists. In the early years of the 1700s, however, comes to the end of the reign of Louis XIV. He dies in 1715. And so this manner of grand style kind of goes down. So this leads us towards a new style that we call Rococo. This is a, is a time period where we have smaller canvases, light colors, elegant figures, and lush landscapes like Fragonard's The Swing. This is what some people might consider the demise of art, where there's a low moral base and not a great value um, of morality in the particular painting. In political power, we have a moving of the royal center going to Paris. So rather than Versailles, the political power goes takes up residence in Paris. And the aristocracy have a much greater political power than we've seen in the past. So we have wealth and enormous power. But this oftentimes is a recipe for disaster. This Rococo style parallels the aristocratic lifestyle at the time. The aristocracy is only a small percentage in France at the time, but owned over 90% of the wealth. There is a small growing middle class that this does not set well with them for very long. So remember this as we look toward the French Revolution of 1789. As Louis XVI comes to power, he marries a young Austrian woman named, we've all heard of her, Marie Antoinette. She's Queen of France and liked at first, and she's friends with our awesome artist, Elizabeth Vigée Lebrun. And Lebrun paints many, many portraits of her. And this is an early portrait, a typical three-quarter length portrait in typical uh, Rococo clothing. So this would be a very uh, fashionable and typical Rococo portrait of the time. Later, in her later portraits, Vigée Lebrun embraces a simpler setting, but Marie Antoinette is liked at first as the Queen of France, but her popularity declines, as we know, and she's blamed for France's financial crisis due to her spending. We also have a variety of styles, so it's a little bit harder to determine where these artists fit in. So we're going to talk about Jean-Baptiste Greuze. He fights for recognition as a history painter. He is considered a genre painter to the Academy. And if you were to submit a painting to the Academy, that is what genre you would be in. That's what category you'd be placed in. And at this time where David is painting grand history paintings, that is what we would consider as the, the top of the line as a history painting. So if we categorize these particular um, genres within the Academy, of course, Jacques-Louis David's painting of the Oath of the Horatio is the top of the line. This is a history painting, uh, bringing forward our moral values and sense, and it do, is not depicting the Rococo. This, this history style is bringing back classics and this is what we would consider neoclassicism. So we have these two styles kind of happening um, one right after the other and definitely in reaction to the other one. Next in line would be portrait paintings. 
So it would be suitable and okay for an artist to be a portrait painter. Third on our list would be still life and fourth would be landscape. Fourth being the bottom of the totem pole. You were not a good painter if you were a landscape painter at the time. History painting is what it should be. So Gruz really fights for recognition as a history painter. He doesn't paint in the same style as David does, even though he's a contemporary of David. But he believes and understands that a painting should edify and challenge the status quo. So he still, in his own way, is challenging the frivolous style of the Rococo. He paints scenes where he believes if the viewer can understand that it shows some intellect. Gruz, as well as Chardin, is being influenced by Rousseau, and they reject the idea of progress, which is a leading French philosophy, and urges people to turn back to natural values and to um, engage in a simple, honest life of peasants. So this is where we see Gruz kind of uplifting that lifestyle, and it's being exalted as a grander thing, perhaps, than it is. But he is displaying simple, honest life here of rural families. This is an anti-Rococo pursuit of happiness. It's a virtuous example and it answers the call for the rejection of this debased style of painting that we see in Rococo. These paintings are popular. They're reproduced and they're, they sell better than history paintings. They were also conversation pieces. Another artist in this category who's rejecting the frivolity of the Rococo and is the opposite of Watteau is Chardin, Jean-Baptiste Simon Chardin. You can just refer to them by their last names if that's easier. This is, again, portraying the middle class style and taste. There are tiny details here, preparing of a meal. This is still perhaps part of Rococo. It is material existence, it's furnishings, garments, it's fabric. The atmosphere is Rococo. It is rejecting the frivolity of Rococo. And Chardin's piece draws us in. This is titled Saying Grace, and we are drawn into this interior scene and creates a quiet atmosphere that responds to the taste of the public, and that this art is being marketed.